Flooding exacerbating our rental crisis. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to talk about an article which is highlighting, well, a very concerning issue. There's a rental crisis. We've been talking about that for some time now. Viewers have been sharing experiences. We've heard about everything that's been happening in the sunny coast or really in many of the regions. But here in Brisbane as well, rents are just going crazy. And as we saw in the video I released this morning, rental stress is going up while mortgage stress is going down. So that's, an, you know, that's kind of a distinction there. And the definition of, well, housing stress, let me bring up that definition here, is if you're spending for low income 30%, of your gross income on housing costs. Okay, so with that going up, prices of rents going up, let's let's bring it up. Hang on, we'll have a look here. Asking prices, Brisbane rents, and once it loads up, come on, you can load up. You can load up. Oh, it's not working. Hang on. Hang on. Let's, um, there we go. There we have it. You can see here, for all houses, 568 bucks, 510 for a normal one. And you know, if we go back in time, back in time, you're sitting around, where are you going? You know, three-bedroom house, 420 in 2014. Two, you know, and it didn't go up that much for 2020. And then, boom, it started increasing a significant amount. So renting is getting more expensive here in Brisbane. And we've just had a flood. We've just had another flood. Some people have had extensive damage to their houses. I was on the phone this morning to someone from the, the government who was saying, you know, he's working for housing and they've got 900 houses that have been flooded. So they're going there, inspecting them, checking them, looking at the damage they have to rectify. So this is a major issue. Fortunately, we've only had a bit of water ingress here and some damage. I, I tore out all the plaster yesterday in part of our house that got damaged. But, you know, we're okay. We've got no problems. We did have a, uh, you know, in the 2011 floods, we had an office, which was in a flood area. And that was a, a bit of a concern. But anyway, let's have a look through this. So the rental market was tight before the southeast Queensland flood. What now for people who can't return home? It's, yeah, this is going to suck, everyone. I mean... Here's the thing, you've got houses like this that even when the water drains, they'll need to do a whole lot of rectification. They'll, the danger will be they'll be mauled, growing everywhere. You need to dehumidify it. It's, it's a problem. You know, and there's a reason why all these houses are built up high. And fortunately, we've got the dams we have because those dams have saved lives. So the floodwaters rose into the second floor of Case uh, Thurston's rental home in Graceville, destroying furniture and personal items and carpet, uh, the backyard and carpeted the backyard with mud. The house is probably a write-off because the walls are all swollen, the kitchen's completely destroyed, and bathrooms. She said. With, when the ABC met Cass during the cleanup effort in Brisbane Southwest, she acknowledged that she and thousands of others would need to look for a new rental property. But a few days later, after considering the stress of trying to find somewhere in an extremely tight rental market, she and her family who are already building a new home in a different suburb, have instead decided to spend the next year or so living with family. There's people worse off than us right now. We don't have a place to go, and they're living out of evacuation centres. My heart goes out to them, she said. Even before the floods, there was a crush on rentals across Queensland amid a booming property market. I mean, there you go. And This isn't the highest the river's ever gotten, guys. Tenants Queensland CEO Penny Carr admits it's a major concern. We've had quite a lot of calls already from people who either have to temporarily or maybe in the long term have to go get out of their property and they're struggling to find somewhere, she said. It's pretty grim for people out there at the moment. Miss Carr said vacancy rates are very low, although in southeast Queensland they are highest in Brisbane's inner city. This is the thing. You the old student accommodation in the heart of the city, maybe you could find a place to live there. But, oh, wait a minute, you're a family. It's not going to suit you. 
People since COVID haven't really wanted to pay the higher rental in the inner city, so those rent costs have reduced a bit, but they're not affordable still. But it is one place where there's rental stock, and you've got to think. I wonder if we can get that stock on board, at least temporarily, somehow. I think the thing that distinguishes this flood at the moment is that the vacancy rates started off so low. That's making it harder than it would have been back in 2011. I mean, where's this photo from? Gimp, oh, Gimpy, damn. I mean, this is the thing, you've got to... There's areas that flood, that we know flood, and you can get the flood maps. I mean, if we go Brisbane. Maps. We'll jump over here. Here we go. Uh, wait a minute. Here we go, flood awareness map. Let's launch the interactive map. And... Once it loads up, this will show you the flood risks of your property. I'm setting, you know, our house, we've got a certain height that we have to build that of a habitable floor level. Just a little bit below, probably 50 mils below where this floor is I'm standing on now. Uh, so we're setting out the house at that minimum level, the finished floor level, uh, and <laughs> we have to build up from there. That's what we need to do. Uh, because of the flood overlays, you know, what the cha likelihood of a flood is. You know, a 1% annual chance, 5% annual chance, 2.2 and 0 0.5, you can see here. I mean, have a look. This is the risk you're taking when you're buying in all these suburbs. I mean, we our office, our office was on Kurilpa Street. Where is it? Down here. We were, you know, kind of here back in the 2011 floods and we didn't get any issues we were worried though because there was a chance uh, there was a chance so you've got to realize where you're buying what the risk of flooding is now for us back in 74 just the corner of our property got done so we've got a minimum flood level uh, it's something you've got to be aware of and take into account for your design here's the thing you're getting developments building where they're trying to have engineered solutions to, to mitigate the flood issues but it, it really is a large scale problem that needs to be addressed. And this is where where I would advocate you're going to need to have large-scale infrastructure development to do it. And, well, what's one way to contain a river? It's usually to contain and dam a lot of the water. So Amy McVeigh from the Queensland Council of Social Services said it was not yet possible to judge the extent of the, of the damage and how many people would be unable to safely return to their properties. We have services in Gympie, who were telling us prior to the flood they were handing out tents for families and people to live in, she said. Now they've run out of tents, and besides, living in a tent during this type of situation or at any time is completely inappropriate. There is almost zero rental availability across the state, and it is particularly acute in places like Gympie, Maryborough, Sunshine Coast, and Gold Coast. Ms McVeigh said, It was time for the community to step up. If people have vacant properties, places for people to live, they need to come forward and provide these options to Queenslanders who are in an absolute crisis. Here's the thing. Why are people not wanting to rent out their properties? Why is that never discussed? We're hearing horror stories of terrible tenants and people don't want to rent out their properties. Uh, isn't that their right? There, there's some people advocating for a taxation of empty properties. What do you reckon? Do you think that's a solution? I would argue you need to make it easier for people to build more properties. You need to make it cheaper. Stupid rules like air conditioning and houses for all renters is just going to add to the cost and disincentivizes property. So more than 245 households are in emergency accommodation. Stakeholders met with the state government in Brisbane this week. Housing Minister Leanne Enoch said emergency housing was available and more than 245 households were being supported with emergency or temporary accommodation across Brisbane, Ipswich, Toowoomba, Logan, the Gold Coast, Maryborough, uh, Maroochydore and Gympie. Assistance is also available through referrals from our offices on the ground at evacuation centres and Queensland Government Community Recovery Hubs as they are open across the next few days. Temporary accommodation options are available. We've expanded access and eligibility for products such as a rental grant and loans, loan products in flood-affected areas. The state government says QBuild's teams are rapidly assessing and making repairs 
on damaged social housing properties. We're reaching out across our networks to identify available accommodation, including the WellCamp quarantine facility and hotel rooms that were previously used for COVID-19 quarantines, she said. So there we have it, everyone. Let's have a bit of a talk about this one. So we've got a flood that is exacerbating a already already well-discussed rental crisis. Rental stress is going higher and higher. The demand for rental accommodation is not waning. This is just going to exacerbate an existing problem. We need to make it easier for people to build and develop. We need to remove roadblocks. We need to remove impediments. We need to remove stupid pushes to provide luxuries for rental accommodation, which will just add to the cost. What do you reckon, everyone? This isn't a... This isn't a short-term resolution. This is a manifestation of systematic issues from all levels of government, particularly at council level. How many times am I seeing people bitch and moan about social housing going up in a street because, you know, it'll ruin the aesthetic, cars will be going everywhere, it'll be too dense, and then yet complain about housing affordability. You can't have it for both ways. Okay, you can be a champagne-sipping, a socialist, and maybe... You know, declare your concern at your parties. But in reality, that means knocking down some shitty old spec houses or old Queens Anders and putting up a block of units. you got to deal with it. What do you reckon? Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts on this one. And I hope everyone who's been affected to this for this flood recovers. Remember, it's just material possessions if that's all you've lost. Take care. If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I find and put together here, there are a few ways you can help out. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Take care, everyone. And I'll put you towards this video about, well, the Greens calling for air conditioning and investment properties. Uh, another bloody expense. that I'm sure that's going to address housing affordability. And check flooding areas when you're looking to buy or rent. Take care. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.